Dr. Brown, what was Leonard Ravenhill's impact or uh, sway upon your life? God joined us together really quite supernaturally the last five years of his life. Uh, so from 1989 to 1994, uh, when he died at the age of 87, I had really gravitated towards his message of repentance and revival, the, the depth he had with God, the, the power of the conviction of his words, the visitation of the Spirit when he preached, his life of intercession. Those things that impacted me earlier, reading some of his books in previous years and going to one of his meetings in 1983 that was profoundly powerful. And then we were supernaturally joined together. I, I never really had a spiritual father growing up in the Lord. It's kind of a matter of, of taking hold of God and growing on my own and learning what I could from the Lord through his word and spirit and church life experience. Now I was saved 17, 18 years. God connected us. So he didn't come into my life as a spiritual father, as much as a saintly example who was connected in an extraordinary way with a previous generation, who had a depth that was so different than the superficial microwave culture that we live in and that I can be a part of as well. It's, it's, it's our generation. And what he did was he poured fuel on the fire in my life. He, the things that, that God had birthed in me went deeper through his influence, the, the passion, the hunger. I mean, here, I'd be on the phone with him sometimes, and, and he'd just break down crying. I'm like, I'm so hungry for revival. I've got to see it. I'm going to die. And I remember once he was talking to me. He said, look, we, we've had a whole generation of nonstop Christian radio, Christian TV, and America's in the worst shape it's ever been. He, he always had that broken heart. He was the most broken-hearted man of God I ever knew in my life to this day with a deeper prayer life than anyone that I knew. And even when I'd go and spend a few days with him, we'd be fellowshipping in the afternoon, and we'd spend some time prayer together. There'd still be a time where he'd just say, I'm sorry, I have to get alone. And he would just meet with the Lord. And in the middle of the night, just get alone and meet with the Lord. So there was, there was a depth of life that is so hard to come by in this generation. Uh, one senior leader once said to me about Leonard Ravenhill, they said he, he's kind of the last of his kind. He's an Elijah kind of prophet. When he's gone, we don't have anybody like that in this generation. So there was just that profound deepening, and even uh, turning me on to the writings of Catherine Booth, the co-founder of the Salvation Army with William Booth. I mean, the thing, the, the passion and intensity of those words, and they were just small. I used to look at the little set of books that he gave me, her sermons on aggressive Christianity, and you'd almost see the steam coming out of them. So there was a certain heritage that he tied in with that was something unknown to most of our generation and that immensely helped deepen me, confirm what was happening in me, release springs of revival in my own life to touch others. So I'm forever indebted to him.